Welcome to this edition of DIY3DTech.com. In this episode, we're going to do a little bit of an update on the um, Tarantula Bill project, as well as some of the problems we've encountered with regards to um, GMAC sizing it. So as you can see here, uh, I've started to build it with the existing frame. So the, the issue that I had was the rails. So if you look at the rails, um, they're different than the standard maker rail. So they're the same size. So, you know, here's a 20 and a 20. However, the one thing you'll notice is that these have V slots in them. So the problem with these V slot, with the V slots of this nature, is if we take this, it, again, you can't, you can't tighten it up because uh, the grooves are far deeper with regards to the way that the uh, maker rails that come with it are set up because these are not v-slotted they're just a, a straight slot and then what happens is um, you know in this case the the wheels run inside like this so notice how tight this is just going on there like that so this is the problem so what I was faced with was well, do I redesign and re-laser cut all these mounts with wheels? And that got to be such a big, big project I decided not to do it because unfortunately, before I noticed this problem, I had cut and built, I, you know, below here actually on the bench, I've got an entire frame, GMAX size frame, that looks like the tarantula all cut out of this um, silver piece. And again, you know, this was meant to be the, the bar link to go across the top, so you can see how much wider this this one was desi designed to be rather than the tarantula. So, because I wanted a 12 by 12 print envelope. So, what I decided since I've got limited time, uh, since this is kind of a vacation week for me, or when I started this anyway, uh, I just decided to build it with a standard frame. And then since I've had this cut and I already have the motors and all the other stuff that I would just simply... Um, wait until the fall and then um, use the since this is open open builds design the actual plates with the wheel spacings are open source so I was just going to take those and, and create my own version as I was sort of thinking about before so if you're thinking about this before worn now I could have probably hunted up um, some maker rail of this nature and everything I've seen it out there before I just didn't have the time. I, ran, I just literally ran out of time. So I just decided I'm going to build this one the way it is. And then I don't know what I'm going to do with it at the, in the end of the day. So maybe I'll sell it on eBay or something. Or maybe I love it and use it. We'll see. Anyways, what I wanted to do was also in this a little bit of a, a, a V blog is talk about building kits in general and, and providing some tips on building kits. So there, you know, as far as the tarantula goes, a number of people have done videos, so I'm not going to try to do videos, a build video on it. However, I do want to share how I build kits. I've built a ton of kits in my time, and, and I found, you know, so, a sort of a certain pattern. So I want to share some of those tips with you. So, so tip number one is build all the sub-assemblies first. So as you can see here, I've got all the sub-assemblies built out because one of the things that you can do is if you do this, and some of these you might have to take back apart a little bit um, to, to put together, but you, number one, you notice, you, you know they all go together and you know if you're missing any pieces. So I was missing a few small pieces, nothing big, so I was able to, to make sure I corrected that, got those parts. Also, especially when you get a Chinese kit like this, you're going to run into some problems, and I'll show you one of them. Um, So we got the fan piece to the top of this, so when I built the control section, you notice that, that we have a problem, Houston, that these green pieces are higher than the, um, you know, um, standoffs. Sorry, I was looking for the word there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to 3D print some spacers to actually kick this up a little bit to go out. However, again, you know, I know that this is a problem. Uh, I ran into a couple other little smaller issues like this in the build, uh, nothing major, so that was all pretty good. And the one thing I have to admit about building the tarantula is it's been very therapeutic. Um, most kits aren't very therapeutic, if you know what I mean. 
but there's sort of been, pardon the pun, a little bit of a zen-like to the build of this, which I've really enjoyed. So what I've done is, is about an hour in the evening, I've sat down to dedicate to build everything you see. So I've got about four hours in this build to, to this, this level. And again, I haven't been in a hurry. If, if you really kind of push through it, you could probably get this far in half the time. I'm now to the point where all I need to do is really start assembling the sub-assemblies together. And probably two more hours, the printer should be together. So um, I'm going to say in general, if you're experienced with kids, five to six hours to build it if you just set out and, and do it. Um, me, I kind of, again, was looking at how some of the pieces go together. And, and frankly, a bit of the time uh, is trying to figure out how it goes. Because as mentioned in Chuck Hellebuck's video, the instructions kind of leave off about halfway through. So I've had to do some internet digging and stuff, and that's added to the time. If the instructions were all out there, if you read the instructions in advance, you could actually go through this pretty quickly. Because most of all this is rinse and repeat. Another pro tip that I want to, I want to share with you are these plastic cups. So what I do is I have a bunch of these plastic cups. Notice they're clear. Notice they're shorter. Because one of the things is I want to be able to get my stubby fat little fingers into the bottom of it and be able to pick out parts. Because what I do is I have a series of, of cups. I have about four cups that I keep and, and over here on, on the bench. So primarily three. So what I do is I have one cup for extra parts. So, so far this is the extra part. So when I do a bag, a bag of parts, I put the extra, what I don't use for whatever reason, into this cup. So now if I need to go back and say, whoops, oh, that's how this goes together, I know where the parts are. Uh, next thing is I keep a little cup with my Allen wrenches and tools in it. Um, so they're always handy. These are the tools that have come with it and kind of another one I've thrown in there that I've been using for the build. The other thing I do is I use them, so, so as you see the bags come with the parts and numbered, I dump the parts in here and then I fish the parts out so that I know all the parts are in here and I can kind of get to them instead of dumping them out on the workbench and having them go all over the place they're, they're in this cup. And the other piece is some of the smaller sub-assemblies I throw in a cup like this too. So they're really handy and then when you're done you just stack them up and put them back on the shelf and you have them again to go. Uh, they also work great for mixing up epoxy and everything else. But that, that's uh, another big tip. So that's the second tip. The third tip is a lot of times, um, you know, a lot of projects I build come in bags like this. And so one of the things I do is I stack the bags together so I know what I've been through uh, as I build. And I can go back and reference this because a couple times, especially in this build, since the instructions are very poor, I'm like, okay, so you see at the top, this is bag A10. So did I use bag A10 or not already? So I can go back through, and especially when you're about halfway through, it just comes in handy. And the other thing is, it's a bit of a psychological um, uh, thing, too, because as that, bag, as that stack gets taller and taller, you know you're progressing more and more through the build. In the back of your mind, you can see progress. And that's the other thing I like about doing the sub-assemblies first, I'll add. Is, is it gives me a sense of accomplishment because that's the one thing that that I learned very early on in building anything you really want to establish what is that sense of accomplishment you know so you, you know because if you kind of like doing it half you know halfway through have half of each piece through the entire build you really lose that and, and a lot of people that's why they get frustrated because they can't see that they've been making any ground and this kind of gives a way of showing that you've, you've made this ground and get to this piece and it's um, I don't know for me it takes a lot of the frustration out so uh, again shared a couple pro tips shared you know a big pitfall I hit with this I'm really really disappointed that was very disheartening because two pieces number one the fact it is what it is you know because I was really hoping to do the bigger printer and get the bigger printer before fall out of this but that's not going to happen and the other thing is to make a very amateur mistake and miss the fact that this rail was that, that this is v-slot and this wasn't so I did look on the internet closely at this and I should have seen it in the pictures um, that I looked at I didn't I missed it um, so anyway it's a bit of frustration on my part but it, again it is what it is so I'm just gonna go ahead and build this and then in the fall I'm gonna kick off um, building the bigger G-Max because I really want I, I 
for, for a couple projects I want to do, I need at least a 12 by 12 envelope printer. The 8 by 8s are just just too limiting, I, I think. Um, and maybe I'll even go a little bit bigger. So, anyways, uh, hopefully you've enjoyed these tips and uh, kind of like this update. And again, if you're thinking about this, you now know the pitfall that I just stepped into, so you don't. Um, and hey, give it a thumbs up. Encourage me to continue this build and subscribe to the channel. Uh, a lot more coming on this and, and just 3D printing, laser cutting, CNCing in general. Uh, probably a little bit more CNCing in the fall when I get a little bit more time. But anyways, hey, again, thumbs up, subscribe. See you in the next video. Please click like below and subscribe to the channel to keep up to date on all of our projects.